Welcome to Community Collaboration, Scalability, and Digitization During an Unprecedented Time. I'm Emily E. Boss. And I'm Catherine Dirk, and we're from the University of Nevada Reno Libraries. At the University of Nevada Reno Libraries, we've elected to take a team-centered approach. We have a core team that comes from different departments to work together on digitization projects. The core team will always have someone from metadata and cataloging and digital services. Depending on the scope of the project and who will be involved, our partners are varied, such as Special Collections and University Archives or the Basque Library. Because this model allows us flexibility, we can scale up or down. If we need multiple stakeholders from any unit, more people can join the team based on the project. The first step we take is to have a team meeting that is focused on the specific project. We use a standardized planning template to determine the scope of the project, the level of the digital object, and what metadata is available. We also do a pilot digitization run. This gives us the opportunity to work physically with the materials and determine if there will need to be any prep or special handling. It also gives us a sense of time for capture and post-production, as well as giving metadata and cataloging a chance to look at the materials and determine the metadata needs. One of the most important aspects of our model is determining the metadata ranking. This is a numerical ranking between zero, no metadata, and 10, excellent metadata. Most of the time, stakeholders have some sort of metadata, even though they may not call it metadata. This could be a spreadsheet they've kept for tracking purposes or an export from an old database they were using. A few of the elements we look at are how many formats or types of materials exist in the collection. Is it all paper or a mix of photos and paper? The level of metadata description, is it at the collection level or the item level? And control of the vocabulary in the metadata. Did they have a controlled list of terms being used or is it all just free text? The level of metadata already existing and the ranking it's given can tell us a lot about the complexity and timeline of the project. Historically, digitization at the University Libraries has focused primarily on materials owned by the library due to copyright and permissions. In 2018, the Digital Archivist attended a statewide large-scale digitization workshop where he was approached by the county recorder who had records from the 1860s that needed to be digitized, but they had no equipment that could handle fragile volumes. This initial relationship is what helped us recognize that there was a need in our community for the digitization of historical and unique materials. We also recognize the importance of modeling expertise. As librarians and archivists, we are experienced in digitization and preservation, maintaining technical infrastructure, and assigning metadata. Our team-centered approach allowed us a lot of flexibility to work directly with our community partners. We've had support from our library administration to pursue these partnerships because not only does it establish relationships in the community, but providing access to the materials supports the university's commitment to research activity. There is mutual benefit for the university and our community partners. For example, the mineral collection that we digitized for the Keck Museum is being used by a doctoral candidate. One of our partnerships for unique materials was with the Great Basin Science Sample and Records Library. They had attempted a pilot with their microscope for a small amount of thin slices, which are slices of rocks that are adhered to a microscope slide. Using their microscope took hours to digitize and ended up not being feasible for a larger collection. In the digitization lab, Digital Services was able to use the camera and light table to capture the thin slices in regular light and then in polarized light. Under polarized light, different minerals will appear in different colors and intensity. The collection had very detailed and structured metadata that geologists had recorded on cards that was transcribed to a spreadsheet. As Catherine mentioned, a partnership we did that gained us a lot of goodwill in the community was the Washoe County Recorder's Office Historical Volumes. These were 20 volumes that had a lot of historical value, but not a lot of notoriety in the community. Due to the nature of the materials, we, took, we chose to digitize them as volumes, but to present them online as both PDFs and individual pages. This design allowed patrons to have the experience of flipping through the volume, but the freedom to view individual pages and search page level metadata. Metadata had to be created from scratch, but there was a lot of wonderful discoveries on this project, including some of the first documentation of women holding property in Nevada. The project was well received and the publicity in the county led us to meet with other county offices that were looking to digitize records. Using a flexible digitization model, along with a team-centered approach, allows for unexpected events such as the 2020 pandemic to interrupt but not stop valuable community digitization work. 